Hi, John Valvano here, and in this video I'll show you how to start Lab 6. I've created a folder and I've placed the starter files for Lab 6 and my solution to Lab 4 here in the same folder. And I'm going to open up all three files in PCB Artist. Okay, there's the SEH for the starter file for Lab 6. There's the PCB starter file for Lab 6. One more. This is my solution uh, to Lab 4, which I'm going to lay out in my Lab 6 lab. Okay, so I'm going to select in the SEH solution for Lab 4, I'm going to select the solution, the circuit for, the, for my motor controller. Copy. Okay, now I'm going to go over to the Lab 6 starter file and paste in uh, that circuit into the Lab 6 starter. Now here I'm going to read this very carefully and decide whether I want to merge nets. Uh, all the 5 volts for the two circuits will be 5 volts, so yes for that. All the ground should be connected, yes. Now for all the pins, I'm going to merge it because what will happen is I'm going to throw away the launch pad. So PA2 will always be PA2. Uh, so I'm going to merge all the I.O. pins uh, such uh, that there is exactly one net for each. Uh, this is the base of my transistor. Again, I'm only going to have one transistor in the end, so wherever the nets are, I'm going to merge them. Okay. Now I'm going to place it here, uh, over here in this, in this frame, and that's where I'm going to build the circuit. So I'll place it down here. Place. Okay. Uh, at this point, I'm done with my Lab 4, so I can close this file just in case I don't want to make a mess of it. All right. That was the first step. Uh, down here, I'll put in uh, my name, what it does. This is now going to be Lab 6 Motor Controller. Put in the date, etc. All right. The next step is to connect the Lab 6 circuit uh, to the microcontroller. Okay. All right. It looks a little confusing here. Let me move one of them out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. I'll move this one because it's not yet connected. All right. So this is my new microcontroller right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect uh, the PB6 up to the circuit. There's PB6. There's PB5. There's PB4. All right, so I've, you can see I've connected the individual microcontroller to where the booster pack or where the launch pad used to be. All right, let's go connect them all. I didn't use that one. Let's find the rest of them. Uh, okay, move. Move this a little bit out of the way so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, I've used PD7 as the uh, control chip select for the SD card. So you connect it up. Okay, and then over here, click, click. And you can see here I've tied uh, the, um, the graphics here to PA7. So let's connect it up. PA7. So you see I'm tying PA7 to PA7, PA6 to PA6. PA5 to PA5. I'll clean this up in a second here. I just want to make sure everything's connected. PA4 to PA4. PA3 to PA3. PA2 to PA2. Okay, so now at this point, I have all of my Lab 4 connected to the new microcontroller. So what I can do is throw away the launch pad. So I'm going to click on the launch pad and delete it. Okay. And then I can clean this up a little bit. Cleaning this up so it doesn't look too bad. Okay, that one can go stay there. I made a mess now. There we go. Okay, one of these doesn't look right. Oh, I see. No, looks good. All right. Um, 
Again, I want to be careful to throw away the launch pad and not the microcontroller. So where it says booster pack, I'm going to delete it. So after I've made all the connections to the, um, to the individual chip, I'm going to throw away the booster packs. Delete. And this was my Lab 4 connection. Again, booster pack, delete. Move this guy over here. All right, one more. Make sure I throw away the right one. Booster pack. Okay, so now uh, if you zoom out, you can see that I have the solution here to Lab 4 connected up to this other microcontroller. It's the same microcontroller. It's just a different package. All right, so that's Lab 4. Uh, we do have to power it up. So you can decide however you want to do it. I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a 7.4 volt battery here, and then I'm going to attach in a regulator. Now there's lots of regulator types. Uh, ask your TA what you should use. I'm going to use the uh, 3 volt regulator here. Uh, it's in a TO220 um, uh, package. Easy to solder. It's going to take in the 7 volts and give me out 3.3 .3 add. Right there. All right. All right. Now I'm going to wire it up. So the input to the regulator goes there. The um, ground is connected. And what will come out of here will be 3.3. .3. So I'm going to make a 3.3 a .3 connector here. Uh, rename this net 3.3. Change net. So it's going to be 3.3. So now everywhere in my everywhere that I have 3.3 uh, will be connected here to the power display net name. Uh, I like my uh, test points. So let's add a test point. There are two kinds of test points. There's the big one and the little one. Uh, your choice. I don't care. I'm going to add a test point. I'm going to wire it up. Make it easier to debug. Okay, so I have a test point. Um, I got one more. This is ground here. Okay. Um, in the solution for lab 5, I used plus 5 to power the motor. I don't have plus 5 anymore, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, remove the plus 5 here and make it plus 7.4. My motor will spin a little bit faster. I don't need that. Delete that. Okay, so now what I have is I'm driving the motor right off the battery, um, and I'm driving the microcontroller off 3.3. So you build out the circuit. You don't have to make a lot of changes. The fun of Lab 6 is the layout. So let's uh, make a layout here. So I'm going to take everything I have and just pass it forward to the PCB. All right, let's see. That's very interesting. All my interesting stuff showed up down here in the corner. So let's go grab it. Okay, I got a display. Okay, control shift, grab all these guys here. Okay. Let's do that again. Let's do it this way. There we go. Now we got them all. Move them up here where I can see them. All right. Uh let me do the hard one for you and that is where to put the display. Uh, it turns out depending on where your box is, uh where I put the display is actually on the back of the board. So the first thing I'm going to do is rotate it. And the next thing I'm going to do is flip it. Okay, I'm going to put it on the other side. If you zoom in okay, and click on it, you see that this is green and this is blue. That means it's on the top. Watch what happens when I flip it. Okay, If I flip it, okay, uh, now if I look at the colors, the colors are different. Uh, it's blue. That means it's on the bottom. Okay, So uh, I want to put it on the bottom uh, so that it can fit on my box. So I'll rotate it around. I should have rotated it the other way. There we go. And now, this will make a big deal in lab uh, seven, but here in lab six, it's not that big a deal. 
Um, if I zoom in, what you're going to see is uh, these drill holes here, this one, that one, this one, and this one will mount the PCB to the box, but this drill hole here will mount the LCD to the top of the box. And this smaller blue box represents uh, the view window of where the LCD is. And this other box here, this next rectangle out, will represent the hole that I want to cut uh, in, the, in the box. All right. Uh, that's how we're going to start Lab uh, 6. Uh, the idea here is to drag all the components into the, into the space. So I'm going to drag them in here. Uh, the key to a good dragging process is to uh, have very, very short, um, have very, very short yellow wires. These are called rat's nest. It represents pins that have to be connected. You see uh, I have these two yellow wires crossing. Watch what happens when I rotate it. Uh, you see it's a much, uh, much cleaner track. So the fun part of this, uh, the fun part of this lab really is in placement. Uh, spend a lot of time deciding where to put everything. And then your routing will be very easy. All right, so that's how we got started. Uh, you, you try it.